If you are also looking for professional certified structural engineering services or courses, then don't forget to check link in description of this video. In this lecture, we will learn about the long term deflection by using non linear Pratt method. Previously, for the long term deflection, we were using the combination 3 times dead load and 1.5 times of the live load. But now we will be using the cracking options in the latest version of ETAPS. So let's get started. Since the long term deflection method is quite a computational process, so it takes a lot of time. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll be deleting the rest of the stories in order to demonstrate how the process is done because the analysis takes a lot of time and computational space. So in order to demonstrate how the analysis is actually done, so I'll be using the ground story only. Okay, so the theoretical background is the total deflection includes long term deflection and short term deflection. Short term deflection is due to dead load and live load, but the long term deflection includes a sufficient percentage of the sustained loads. The sustained loads that is the dead load. Short term deflection includes deflection due to dead load plus loads of the live category which is also known as immediate deflection while that long term deflection is due to most of the time dead load while we already discussed in the previous lectures about the deflection limits for example deflection due to dead load and live load for the structure members not to be damaged by long deflection or not supporting non structure elements that are likely to be damaged by large deflection so most of the time we will use this limit that is the shorter span divided by 240 so let's get started before using the long term deflection analysis method we have to remove the property modifiers from the structural elements which we are using so let's say we'll be first deleting the properties which are not used in the model to make our lives easier so first we'll this has to be importantly removed the cracking analysis options include slab analysis most of the time so it's important to remove the cracking modifiers for the slab importantly but for now since we are doing the analysis completely so we'll be modifying for both slabs as well as in beams so we have removed the crack modifiers as per ACI code for the frames now let's do this same for the slabs so we have to remove these modifiers because now we are using the accurate method rather than approximate method suggested by ACI using the ACI suggested modifiers so we'll be performing the non-linear deflection method in order to compute the actual deflection from the cracking of the concrete. So for that purpose, we are removing the approximate cracking modifiers taken from ACI code. Please make sure that this model has to be used only and only for deflection purposes. Now let's define the long term deflection cases but first let's see which load cases we are using for the gravitational loads the load cases which we are using for gravitational loads is dead live finishes wall and that's it so let's define the first we consist we have to have three cases 
for the long term deflection. Let's say first case in which we add dead and live. First, I'm adding all the dead loads. Then I read the live load. All are to be included with the factor 1, and it's a non linear static analysis. Floor cracking analysis click on modify and crack short term. You can modify the maximum iterations and convergence tolerance when you have P delta options or if the results are not converging or giving error so you can modify these numbers and reduce the tolerance in order to have approximation results but the more tolerance you have the accurate the results would be so click on ok I'll be going for the default option suggested by ETABS and you can have the mass source as previous or the defined but since it's not having any effect of seismic in this analysis so for now we'll skip this one and click on ok and similarly make a copy of this case name this as l2 and make the live load percentage as 0.25 only and then click on ok and similarly make a copy of this one and make the case as l3 and make this one as long term cracked this one creep coefficient you can take from a, the aci code uh, and the shrinkage strain is also from ACI code and these values all from ACI code so since this building is to be uh, since we are considering the sustained loads to be more than five years old so that's why the creep coefficient and the aging coefficient you can use as suggested values given as default in ETABS so let's continue so we have defined three non-linear cases for the long-term deflection now in order to make combine these cases we have to use a combination so let's add the combination and then I'll add the cases which we just defined all of these to be with plus sign except the l2 so basically what we are doing is the first is the immediate deflection due to dead load plus full live load but this one l2 subtracts the excessive dive load live load which we have to not to be considered in immediate deflection while for the third case we have the long term non-linear deflection which includes 25 percent of the live load and the sustained loads with the creep coefficient multiplied as per the code recommendation and click on ok now the most important step is to select and assign shell floor cracking option consider the selected floor objects in floor cracking analysis and click on ok if you don't select this option then the cracking analysis would not be happening and in order to speed up the model you can go to you can also give the cracking analysis reinforcement but we'll come back to that shortly in order to speed up the analysis you can click on set load cases to run and click on run do not all and only run the gravitational loads which are important for this analysis so this will save us a lot of time and click on ok now go to analysis and click on cracking analysis option since we are using ACI code, so we'll consider minimum reinforcement as 0 0.0018. Okay, compression reinforcement and tension reinforcement. For explaining this one, I'll just take a quick snip here.
for example if i take a section from this part of the slab i will be seeing something like this these are my columns and this is my slab and it's continued on the left side so when the deflection will happen the slab will deflect like this and similarly here so this part of the slab is having compression and this part is also having compression and the center part is having tension and similarly on the top we are having tension at the supports and center part is having compression so what this option suggests that if you are following ACI code the minimum reinforcement in order to resist the tension wherever we are having tension in the slab you are using 0 0.0018 or simply 0.18 percentage of the reinforcement to resist these tension regions in the slab because concrete is weak in tension so we will use 0. 1.8 as per ACI code minimum recommended percentage to resist these tension forces and similarly for compression force uh, also even if the slab is strong in compression but we'll use the ACI minimum recommended value for the compression as well but please note that when you are performing detailed analysis and design of the slab these values are to be properly checked as per the design and we have already discussed in detail the design of the slab in the previous lectures so you know how you will get exact percentage of the this one i'll quickly do a competition for example if you are using any specific mesh for example if i am using t16 at 200 then my mesh would be t16 uh, in si units uh, having bar diameter or you can say cross section area is 201 and per meter it's 1000 divided by the spacing t16 at 200 means my mesh would be 1005 millimeter square per meter and then you can divide it by the slab cross section area to get this percentage so that's very simple but for now let's not go to details which we have already covered in the design part of the slab and for now i'll put the minimum of aci code recommended values for 0 0.0018 and click on ok now you can run the analysis as well So the analysis is now complete let's display the long term deflections go to the deform shape and click on long term deflection non-linear which we defined and you have to click on draw controls on object displacement use it and click on ok So the reflection which we are getting at this point is 0.34 inches you can convert these values into millimeter also by selecting the units here and click on consistent units make it as millimeter and click on ok so then you'll get these values in millimeters which is 7.9 millimeters and here For now I'll revert back to inches. Let's say my span in both direction is same. If it was different then I'll consider the shorter span in order to compute the limits. The limit which we discussed in the start of the video is shorter span divided by 240. 
so for now my span in both direction is same so i'll take 288 inches divided by 240 the span value is 288 inches please note that this span which you are using in formula should be shorter span so the shorter span divided by 240 is giving me a limit of 1.2 inches so what i can do for my ease I'll give a minimum value of deflection to 1.2 inches since it's a negative value so I cannot specify it as maximum value so that's why anywhere which is exceeding this value will show in purple color for instance if my limit was 1 inches then even it's passing 1 inch criteria let's say if my deflection limit was 0.5 inches so anywhere which is exceeding 0.5 inches it will show with purple color but for now it's not exceeding the limit anywhere and if i reduce the limit further in order to demonstrate how it would appear so this part of the slab is exceeding 0.2 inches so it's coming all in purple color but for now on my limit of deflection is 1.2 inches so it is all within the limits of deflection if your slab is failing or exceeding the deflection limits there are multiple methods which you can do to solve let's focus on four methods which you can do in order to solve the deflection the first thing you would go for is try increasing the slab reinforcement which we specified in analysis options and cracking analysis options you can increase the tension reinforcement since tension is primarily resisting the deflection and cracking in concrete so you can increase the tension reinforcement in order to reduce or control the deflection so the first would be area of steel or you can say tension reinforcement and then the second option would be increasing the strength of concrete but this one doesn't affect that much however it does contribute to the long-term deflection the third would be increasing the sizes of the drop or thickening around the column so that that also contributes in reduction in the deflection in slabs the fourth would be in order to control deflection increasing the thickness of the slab Please note that this option should be the last option for you because this increases the slab thickness and there is a drawback of this one as well because this will increase the increase the dead load of the slab as well which will on the other hand in again increase the deflection so that's a very fine line between which you have to find the exact ratio which is meeting your limitation of the deflection as well as the dead load of the slab is not too much exceeded that you have to pour enough concrete just to meet the deflection criteria and it would be uneconomical so these are the highlights of how to compute the long-term deflection in the latest version of ETEPS. i'm using 2019 version you can use 21 version as well which is available right now so this option stays the same so the summary of today's video was we have found how to use the long-term deflection analysis in ETEPS using non-linear cracked analysis options. This option is similar to the option which we are using in CSI safe software for designing of the slabs. So that's the conclusion. Thank you for watching.